Hey people, so today we're going to be making a quick parallax background using Godot and assets from Kenny.nl. I'll put the links to the asset pack that we've used in the description uh, along with all the files. So first off we'll start by just dragging all the files into the file system that we're going to need later. So I've already put these in this file here, we'll drag that straight over to here, the file system browser. So we're going to start off with a 2D scene, no 2D is put in by default here. So this will allow us to use this as a background in other scenes if we want to in other projects. So we're going to set up the rest of the scene as I'm going to show you here. So we're going to start off by adding a parallax background. This is basically required for all the parallax layers to work on top of it. So I'm just going to add eight parallax layers to the parallax background. And we're going to add a sprite to every one of those so that they'll all have sprite associated with them and we can see them. We're also going to attach a sprite to the node 2D. It's going to be used to add a character sprite to later and we're also going to add a sprite. We're going to put a sun in the background and we're also going to add a color rect and we can use that to color the background there. So I'm just going to go through now and rename everything so that we can tell what we're working with later on. Okay, so basically the higher up the tree a node is, the further towards the background they'll be. And they'll appear under other layers lower down in the tree. The closer you get to the bottom, the closer to the foreground that node will be. So the next step is to attach this short script to the parallax background so that it works without moving the camera. And the script will be in the video description so you can just copy and paste it into your own project. So what we're going to do now is just set the colour of the colour rect by selecting it and going over to the inspector. Click on the rectangle next to where it says colour and set it to a light blue colour for the sky. I already know what colour I'm using so I'm just going to type in the hex code here. The next step is to assign textures to all of the sprites by selecting the sprite, dragging it from the file system here and uh, onto the inspector here. Hey, this is Editor Virtually Games here. While Tutor Virtually Games is assigning sprites, I'd like to take the opportunity to remind you that all sprites, the script and inspector values will be in the description. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my music by clicking the card at the top of the screen or finding the link in the description. Now back to the tutorial. So the next thing to do here is to just drag everything into a place that makes sense. Try and make sense of all of these. So here if we just put the sun over here. Next thing to do here is the background clouds are going to need flipping upside down so uh, they look like the underside of a cloud. To do this we just select the sprite for background cloud 1, find scale in the inspector and change the Y scale to minus 1 to flip upside down. We also need to change the size of the background clouds and the foreground hills so there's a greater illusion of depth. For the clouds just change X to 0.75 and Y to minus 0.75. Um, as that will flip and scale to three quarters the size. Change hills two to 0.75 on the X and Y as it will resize to three quarters. So next we're going to colour the sprites using the inspector. Go to visibility under canvas item and select the colour you want. Um, I already know what I'm going to use. I'll just type in the hex code. I'll leave the hex codes down in the description for reference. So as you can probably see, what I've done here is just set sprites further in the background darker and made them lighter towards the foreground. I think it gives a good sense of depth. You don't have to, that's just my preference. Next step now is to set the values for each parallax layer so that each sprite moves at a slightly different speed. Um, so we're going to put lower values in the background as objects further away from us appear to move slower. 
higher values in the foreground. Values that we've used in this example will be in the video description. After this we're going to adjust mirroring on the parallax layers from within the inspector for tireable assets. This is the width of the sprite in pixels and it just means that it will tile smoothly to create a continuous infinite scrolling background. For anything else set the value so that the asset is reloaded as it exits on one side. Values uh, we've used will be in the description. And now we're going to add a sprite for the player character. Drag him down and check it out. So before we can check it out, we just need to save the scene. Just save it as background, something. Press play, it'll ask us to select a main scene, which will be the scene we just saved. Okay, so you can see we've got some issues here with assets not loading in correctly. What we're going to do now is just adjust the size of our screen to work with the assets we have currently. Do this by going to project, project settings, scroll down to display, window. Size, we're just going to set to a square of 600 by 600. Close that. And so the last step now is to just change the size of the colour rec to 600 by 600 and give it a try. So I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks so much for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.